Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matty with the Toasty Bros. And today we have a pretty interesting benchmark for you guys. This is a RX 580, but it's new. Yeah, so you can buy this RX 580 new from Amazon. It's a hundred bucks and you know, the 580 is an older card, but it did have a lot of performance when it came out. And considering it has eight gigs of VRAM, does it still hold up in 2022? The answer is yes, but there is some caveats. But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Big shout out to today's sponsor, Naraka Blade Point, which is currently hosting its free weekend as well as a 50% discount on Epic and Steam. If you've somehow avoided hearing about this game, allow me to catch up to speed. Naraka has pioneered its way into the battle royale genre with its unique melee focused combat. It features a deadly collection of weapons and moves that lead to various fighting styles and powerful combos for you to use. Naraka features all sorts of heroes for you to play. Their newest hero, Faria Shen, will be available December 22nd. All of these heroes can be customized giving them brand new outfits, weapon skins, or even entirely different faces. Now is the best time to try the game out. Free weekend is fast approaching, and the new Christmas Lotto is about to start December 15th to 25th. Players who complete certain in-game quests will receive Naraka lottery tickets, with a chance of winning prizes such as an Xbox, RTX 3090 Ti, and more. Click the link in the description right now to try out Naraka Blade Point for free, only between December 16th and December 22nd on Steam and Epic or on Xbox if you have Xbox Game Pass. You can also get a 50% off discount between December 15th and January 5th on Steam and Epic platforms. So huge thanks again to Naraka Bladepoint for sponsoring today's video. So before we talk about this graphics card specs, let's talk about this test bench. So we have the Ryzen 5 5600G 6 core 12 thread. We have some PNY Accelerate 3600 megahertz 16 gigs dual channel RGB RAM. We of course have a 580 installed right now. We also have a one terabyte team group NVMe SSD. We have an Asus Tough Gaming B550. For the power spot, we have an XPG 650Y and then cooling this CP right now, we're using a very nice deep cool 240 mil liquid cooler. And of course it is inside of a beautiful deep cool case. So the RX 580 was really a legendary car when it came out. It was one of the first cards that really advertised 1440p gaming. Now you gotta remember this was five to eight years ago at this point that 1440p games at the time weren't quite quite as demanding. So yeah, nowadays 1440p on like Warzone 2.0 on a 580 is gonna not really work very well, but obviously for older games and especially newer games at 1080p or even 720p, the 580 is still an absolutely amazing card for the price. We do have an eight gig model here, but Matt will tell you about some of those little kind of weird things about this card for a hundred dollars because you still can buy used 580s for the 50 to a hundred dollar range. So that might be a better option, but we're gonna find out. Now this isn't a normal RX 580. This is an RX 580 with 2000 and 48 stream processors. Now you might be thinking, well, what does that really mean? It mainly means it's a cut down RX 580. The main RX 580 comes with 2,304 stream processors. So you're losing a decent amount of performance here. In reality, this 588 gig is more like a 578 gig. So if you're buying this card on Amazon, you check that link down below. The title is RX 580 2,048 stream processors in the title, which wasn't there before. They did update that. Um, so basically it is a cut down version of the RX 580, but it's still comes with the eight gigs of VRAM. You got GDDR5 VRAM, a memory clock of 1,750 megahertz. You do have 128 texture units and coming in at $100. I do think the card might still have a place in the market depending on how well it performs in the latest and greatest titles because the 580 is, well, an old card nowadays. You might not have great driver support. You might have some issues with some newer games, um, but we're gonna go ahead and dive into some benchmarks at 1080p and see how it performs. All right guys, now that we have this interesting RX 580 on the test bench, let's go ahead and dive into some benchmarks. Now the games we decided to test are as follows, Cyberpunk, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Forza Horizon 5, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and Spider-Man. Now first up in Cyberpunk 1080p medium settings, we start to see some of the limitations of this $100 graphics card in 2022. We got an average of 42.98 FPS with minimums of 29 and a max of 57. Now this is where things get weird. We're looking at a graphics card with 2048 stream processors versus 2304 that comes out of the normal RX 580. And I'd be willing to bet a normal RX 580 would be easily able to get 60 FPS average on these same settings. And I would really say that this card is more of a 570 than a 580, just purely based on the stream processor count. Now that doesn't mean at $100 it's not an interesting buy and something you may want to pick up because there's really not a lot of cheap budget GPUs out there that can perform 
perform at this level, and we'll talk more about that later on in the benchmarks. Next up in Shadow the Tomb Raider at 1080p medium settings, we got an average of 68 FPS. While Shadow the Tomb Raider is an older AAA title, it is still very demanding on modern hardware, and still getting a 68 FPS average is pretty solid. When you're spending $100 for a new graphics card, I would hope you could get 1080p medium high settings, 60 plus FPS, and I think this card does deliver in that category in this benchmark. As you can tell, Shadow the Tomb Raider more than playable. Next up in Forza Horizon 5, another game that fared way better than I thought it would actually. 1080p medium settings, we got a 65 FPS average. Now one concern I do have with this card is the fact that the RX series is probably not going to be supported by AMD a whole lot longer. It is an older card, it came out years ago, um, and it's not really going to get the latest driver support for much longer. So if you are going to buy this card, do know it's probably going to be like a two year card max before driver support is dropped. Um, and at that point, it's not like the card is absolutely useless, but the latest games that do come out will not get game day drivers. So you will have some struggles there in terms of locking in a good FPS number. Um, so you do need to keep that in mind. The longevity of this card isn't really there, but does the price outweigh that? I really do think so. Now next up in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, we did test the multiplayer. We did not dive into Warzone. Uh, 1080p balance settings. We actually got 70 plus FPS, dips into the 60s. Warzone would probably struggle a bit more. Uh, we ended up going with the multiplayer because it is a bit easier to run. Uh, I'd imagine Warzone, you'll be dipping well below 60 most of the time, even on lower settings. So do keep that in mind. But running balanced, which is kind of a mixture of like high and medium settings with a little bit of low here and there, you're able to get a 60 plus FPS experience, which is more than playable, pretty smooth. There was some latency issues in terms of being in like the 10 to 11 millisecond range most of the time, but it wasn't a bad gaming experience. It was still really solid. Now, the last game we decided to test was Spider-Man 1080p low settings and we got 60 plus FPS but when we were swinging around in the city we dipped into the 40s which is not uncommon for a budget GPU in Spider-Man. It's a very hard game to run even with AMD FSR you are going to get dips below 60 FPS. Now in recap, the RX 580 2048 stream processor version is a pretty interesting card. I think for $100, as long as it stays at $100, I have seen that Acerix has upped the price a bit on Amazon to like $105 to $110. I don't really think it's worth it at that price point. I think at $100 or less, it's a good buy. But if you do stay tuned to the channel, we'll be doing a build guide on the same card from a different company that's being sold on AliExpress for about $60, which if you're in another country at $60, absolute steal. Definitely pick this card up, but if you're in the U.S., you might have to wait a while to get that card, so is paying the extra $30 to $40 to get that instant Amazon Prime shipping worth it? I don't know. It's up for you to decide, and let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this 580, and what you think about the fact that a 580 is still being sold new on Amazon. Is it something you would consider for a budget build? Well, we're at least going to be doing it in a build guide, so you'll be able to see that, but uh, yeah, now that we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. So we just got done benchmarking the graphics card, and the good news is it holds up really well, even though it's kind of like a, a knockoff-y sort of card. It is a legit 575-80, so you know, you do have that to keep in mind, but at $100, maybe check the used market. Sometimes you can buy the 570 or 580 for 50 to $75 used, but some people don't like used, so if that's the case, you really want a new 580, this is your card. Now we do have a build guide coming up on the channel where we're using another one of these cards. This one that was sent over by Ace we're just using for this benchmark video. But we are doing a build guide from one that we bought off AliExpress, which those things go for $60. So if you do buy one off AliExpress, you may have to wait a little bit of time, but I think $60 versus $100 is a really good deal. You're kind of paying that $40 for the prime shipping of buying on Amazon. But we will be doing a build guide with one of those, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. But for the most part, it's an interesting card. It's kind of weird that a card that's this old is still being sold new <laughs> on Amazon. Um, but the fact that it's there and the fact that we're in a market right now where there's not a whole lot of new stuff that's really high performing on the budget side, I still think some people will find this a good option for your next gaming PC. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Now, if you don't want to have to worry about picking out your graphics card, you don't want to have to do all that research and whatnot, you should just leave it to PC Bros. We're kind of the experts. PCBros.tag. We sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. And if you buy a PC during December, Santa 5 for 5% off your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.